Item 5 on the order paper, the adjournment. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes, and all other speakers will have approximately six minutes. I call Mr. Dominic Bradley. I will ask you to August Ahasorum and Rune Shaw Awalu for and Rin Egendala in Ospedil Knoch Nanonini in your country. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and uh, I'm pleased to propose uh, this debate on the emergency department at Daisy Hill Hospital in Newry. And uh, I thank those colleagues who have uh, remained behind to participate in the debate. And uh, I'm aware that uh, Mr. Kennedy and uh, Mrs. McEvitt uh, have been in touch to uh, send apologies. They were unable to attend because of other matters. Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, as you probably know, Daisy Hill is one of uh, the most outstanding hospitals on this island. And, uh, I want to begin by placing on record my sincere thanks and appreciation to all the dedicated staff in the hospital for their uh, continuous care, compassion and professionalism as they care for thousands of patients who pass through the hospital each way. And, uh, on a personal note, I want, them, I want to thank them for the emergency care they gave to a close relative of mine uh, recently, uh, who was admitted in the early hours uh, of the morning and who received excellent care, and care, I have to say, which saved his life. So, Mr. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, you know, whilst, whilst I speak here today, uh, it's not something which is theoretical to me or to anyone here. Uh, it's a topic which is a life and death topic to our constituents and to our families in the area. Uh, as I said, Daisy Hill is one of two acute hospitals uh, in the Southern Thrust area, the other, of course, being Craig Avon. And whilst I raise this issue here today, it's not a question of pitching one hospital against the other. Obviously, we need both hospitals, but we need to uh, sustain proper investment on both sides. Uh, in recent years, there has been uh, the perception uh, that services have been withdrawn from Daisy Hill and transferred to Craig Avon Area Hospital. And I suppose the most recent, recent decision was that uh, to relocate the stroke, stroke unit from Daisy Hill to Craig Avon. And uh, this incensed uh, the local people, and uh, it is one that I'm on record of opposing here in this House and elsewhere. But today, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, I want to raise the issue of the pressures on the emergency department at Daisy Hill Hospital. And obviously, I'm bitterly disappointed that there's no minister here to respond to the speeches made by members, myself, uh, and uh, the public who are viewing today's proceedings and those in our constituency who are interested in the sustainability of the emergency services at Daisy Hill will indeed quite rightly take a very poor a uh, very dim view of the Minister's non-attendance. Uh, obviously, our health service is under great strain, and uh, I don't have to leave my own constituency uh, to see that for myself. Uh, I already referred to the decision to withdraw the stroke services from Newry, uh, but uh, in South Armagh also, we have extremely uh, poor ambulance response times, uh, to the extent that the local community have had to um, get together and form a first responders group. And, uh, I praise the local uh, people who had the, the uh, foresight to do that uh, on, on the circumstances where, because of uh, the terrain, the roads, the location, uh, many people's lives would be in danger in the emergency situation. 
Um, we also have the thrust uh, proposal to permanently close the minor injuries unit in Armagh. Uh, these may be viewed as different parts of our health service, but taken together, the picture they paint is not a very good one. In fact, taking these issues together, uh, it's no wonder that the emergency department in Dizzy Hill has had uh, increases in attendances of up to 10 per cent. Numbers presenting to the service are continually increasing. People are waiting longer to be seen, and the Trust is struggling to recruit the staff required to maintain the 24-hour a day, seven days a week service. And uh, it's indeed that which uh, has prompted me to take this matter to the House, because there are real and genuine concerns among the hospital staff and in the community at large that this could lead to reduced operating hours. Now, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I referred earlier on to my own uh, personal experience with a close relative. And uh, I spoke to the staff, both, both the ambulance paramedics and the staff in the emergency department that, that night, and they told me very clearly that had the emergency department in Newry been closed, that that relative would not have survived had the journey had to be made to Craig Oven or elsewhere. And that's why I say it is a very serious matter. And I, I, I believe that this restriction of ours, reduction of ours, closure at night cannot be allowed to happen. I do uh, take the word of the Trust that they are making every effort to deal with this situation. There is a problem with recruitment of staff at the middle grade level uh, needed to sustain the service. But what I want to see is the Minister and his department at central level lending support and assistance to the Trust to ensure that they can recruit the people they need to keep the emergency department in our hospital open. I have met previously the previous Chief Executive, Mrs McAlinton, the current Acting Chief Exec uh, Executive, Mrs Clark, and their executive team. Uh, and I do appreciate, as I say, the efforts that they are making to address this problem. But uh, without the help of the department and the minister, there is only a certain amount that they can do. The Southern Trust has already engaged in recruitment exercises on a continual basis on some 16 separate occasions, and yet they have not uh, managed to attract the staff that they need. So in such a situation, there needs to be uh, ministerial involvement in order that uh, attractive packages can be put together to ensure that we are able to uh, treat, uh, sorry, to attract the, the uh, level of staff that's needed. Um, a, a detailed action plan has been drawn up, has been drawn up by the trust, and uh, has been agreed, and that will support the continued provision of emergency care overnight. But, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, that is only on a short-term basis. Uh, what we want is a sustainable service which will continue into the future and which will not be threatened uh, by staff shortages. We do welcome, as I say, the efforts that are being made by the Trust, but the, the service still remains extremely vulnerable to any further loss of medical staff. Uh, and sustaining the service in the medium to long term uh, is a significant challenge for the Trust. Without the help, support and assistance of the Minister and his team at departmental level. So, um, hopefully, Mr Deputy Speaker, we will not have to continue too long into the future with the uh, here today, gone tomorrow ministers who are leaving uh, the health service in the, in, in the lurch. Uh, I want 
a minister here in the House who is answerable and accountable uh, to the members of the House and to the public at large. We do not have that at the present time. So um, I would repeat my appeal to the Department and to the Minister whenever he returns to lend the type of help, the type of support and the type of assistance to the Southern Trust uh, in uh, ensuring that they are enabled and in a position to uh, attract the level of staff that they need to keep Daisy Hill Emergency Department open 24 hours a day and seven days a week. That's what the members of this House want, and that is what the, the public and the patients want. Shin awil lorach ogum eran kesho egam momachisho a kyonkolya agus merdurt me tamay buich asin jesha al an tower tower taksho a ardu sitigsho inu agus gom buich as arish lish na buil aves eglacho parche in sijispra. So thank you very much, Mr. Uh, speaker. Uh, for the opportunity to raise this matter, this important matter here today. And once again, uh, I want to thank the members uh, who will, uh, in due course, participate in this debate. Goramila Mayoga, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I call Ms. Megan Fairland. Um, and I thank the member for tabling um, this debate today. And I welcome the opportunity to speak on such a serious and important, important issue for the people of my area. And I have to say at the outset that it is shameful and it is a disgrace that there's no health minister here to respond to such a, cru a crucial and critical issue to the people of Nyeri and Armagh. Daisy Hill Emergency Department has an excellent track record, treating annually over 35,000 patients, including over 3,000 from the North Louth, Louth area. So it's a crucial service for local people and also um, it's crucial to have that service there in, in the cross-border sense. It's important to note as well that Daisy Hill has the best record for thrombolysis treatment, which has in itself saved many, many lives in the emergency department over the past number of years. What's also unique about the situation at Daisy Hill Emergency Department is that Out of Hours is also located on site, meaning patients can be referred directly and patient care, as, as it should, always comes first. Recently, myself, Conor Murphy, MLA, who participated in this debate, and MP for Nyeri Armagh, Mickey Brady, met with the Southern Trust to discuss various health care issues across the area, with Daisy Hill obviously to the fore. We were told that the numbers used in the emergency department in Daisy Hill had increased more than any other hospital, and in the last year I'm led to believe it was over 10%, which is an increase of over 4,200 patients in the last year alone, and that was putting a lot of added pressure onto the staff. However, we were assured that they would do all in their power to ensure that there was adequate cover and service would be maintained. But I think we can all agree that this needs to be treated as a matter of urgency, it's my understanding that posts have been advertised, and although doctors have applied for posts, there haven't been any interviews, and that process needs to begin as soon as possible. And just another point, there shouldn't be anything stopping emergency department consultants rotating between the two acute hospitals in the Southern Trust area. This happens in other departments within the Southern Trust, and we already know that there are some consultants from Craig Avon doing shifts in Daisy Hill Emergency Department as locums, so joint working to resolve the problem needs to be given serious consideration. We know that a lot of money has been recently invested in the emergency department as it has been upgraded and refurbished. But there's a huge amount of fear, as Mr Bradley pointed out in our area, at the future of Daisy Hill, particularly after the decision that was made um, on the local stroke unit. And so much so that people talk to the streets and I think the huge turnout shows the depth of feeling that there is out there about, about our hospital. We hope that the assurances that we received at that same meeting around the Paediatric Centre of Excellence which is expected to be completed by August 2017, indicates the hospital's future viability. The emergency department is the, is the heart of any hospital, and so it is vital that this service in Daisy Hill is protected, particularly for the people of South Armagh, many of whom are outside the recommended ambulance response time. For example, if someone in Colleville, an area that I represent, the most southern point in the north, were to take seriously ill, without a fully functioning and accessible emergency department in Newry, they are told their next closest option is Craig Avon. But even that isn't necessarily true, given the state of local roads and the state of the road on the way to Craig Avon um, is, is not best for getting there in an emergency. So the next port of call, realistically, would be the Royal, which is over an hour away. 
and that would be a disgraceful situation given that those situations can often be life or death. I, f I feel very strongly about the fact that the people of South Armagh deserve better than they've been getting from this health department, which in my opinion is very little. There's an unfolding GP crisis from Cross McGlen to May, the totally inadequate ambulance service cover in South Armagh, the inability of this department to deliver a daycare centre in Cross McGlen, all wrapped up with what appears to be a complete lack of interest by this health department. So it can't be understated how crucial a part Daisy Hill plays in all of this, and it must be protected because the reality is, if it isn't, people will suffer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I thank Mr. Bradley for bringing this issue forward for debate this afternoon? And I'm speaking on behalf of my party colleague, Mr. Danny Kennedy, who is attending a funeral and sends his apologies. Danny has asked me to emphasise the value that the hospital has across the local community, across Newry and Armagh. It's very highly thought of, not only in terms of the treatment it provides, but also the skills of the staff that work within it. Even in the most difficult circumstances, the staff are managing to keep the hospital working very efficiently. Indeed, I note that the publication of the latest a &E figures for waiting times, 89% of people presenting to Daisy Hill are seen within, within the four-hour standard. This compares very favourably to the performance of my own hospital in Antrim, which saw a further deterioration to 61%. That's a credit to the doctors and nurses, the entire staff at Daisy Hill. I'm very aware that we're not comparing like with like, and I'm sure the staff in Daisy Hill would have every sympathy for their colleagues working under intense pressure in Antrim. Whilst Daisy Hill may not be facing the same pressures that some other hospitals are, by no means can it afford to rest on its laurels. In fact, I'm aware there has been significant change in the health sector, health service provision in the wider South Down area. The downscaling of services in the Down hospital, hospital will have a knock-on effect and impact on those offered by Daisy Hill. Whilst I appreciate the minor injuries unit in Down will mitigate the worst of the reduction, it is only open part-time. After 8 p.m. during the week, and after 5 p.m. at the weekends, there is no emergency or minor service in that hospital. So Daisy Hill plays the only important role. The future of Daisy Hill is now under some threat. While the previous minister would like to admit it or not, the Donaldson report, as well as TYC, quite clearly shone the spotlight on our smaller hospitals. Whilst my party is not stubbornly opposed to any change, we would be opposed to change just for the sake of it. Every decision needs to be taken with sound medical reasons, and right now Daisy Hill appears to be offering an efficient, delivering safe and effective care, and so we see no reason to change that. What the patients and staff of the hospital need is some certainty about their future. If a crowd begins to hang over this hospital very quickly, it will find it difficult to recruit staff in the numbers that it needs then ultimately more money will have to be spent on locums, and that will become unsustainable. Unfortunately, however, the absence of a minister, his absence today, giving a great disservice to the good people of Newry and Armagh, and the sideshow which we are witnessing, the in-out effect of having no minister at times, or having a minister for only a few hours will do nothing to protect this hospital or offer it the support that it needs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And I call Mr. Conor Murphy. Uh, caught me on the hop there. Could I, before I start, could I apologise? I missed a question to the Agriculture Minister last week. Uh, I was in Stormont House at the talks, trying to obviously secure the future of this institution, but nonetheless, I neglected my duties in the Assembly Chamber here, and I apologise to the Chamber for that. Uh, can I thank uh, the member for bringing forward the uh, debate this afternoon, as he said, and as other speakers have said, an extremely important debate uh, for our constituency, probably for a large part of the South Down constituency as well. I would say this is probably the primary public sector, public service uh, discussion or debate or concern uh, that applies right across the region. Daisy Hill Hospital is such a vital 
uh, part of our public sector infrastructure and provide such a, a vital service to a largely rural uh, dispersed community that isn't well served by either public transport or roads uh, and I say that as a former regional development minister uh, but the history of that area has been one of poor, poor infrastructure uh, which is, it will take some time uh, to improve. It is served as, as, as the, the proposer of the motion has said by two hospitals the Southern Trust area and this has not been about uh, trying to play one hospital off the other although the, the, the people who work as you consistently meet the people who work in Daisy Hill and those who use the service do feel uh, quite often the poor relation uh, to the needs of Craigavon uh, hospital, area hospital. One of the, uh, I suppose, the telling features in recent times is that the Southern Trust Management produced a 50-page document outlining their plans uh, for the next three years uh, and in that they, they stated that they would build a new hospital at the Craigavon area site but no mention of the impact that such a development of a new hospital would have on the existing hospital and services provided at Daisy Hill. And others have outlined the most recent service to migrate from Daisy Hill to Craig Avon was the, an essential part of the stroke service, not the entirety of it, but a key part of it. And so there is a justifiable concern uh, among the, the staff, uh, among patients, among families and people who use it and, uh, and like the, the member who proposed the motion and others, we all have very much direct experience of availing of the services of Daisy Hill Hospital and very much appreciate both the, the quality of the service there and the proximity uh, to our community that that, where that service is provided. The, uh, I do acknowledge the efforts of the Trust. Uh, we have met them, as others have done, and, and Megan Fern repeated that. We have met them uh, to try and discuss out the, the problems that face uh, retention and recruitment of staff in the uh, emergency department. Uh, I acknowledge the efforts that they've been making to try to do that, but they, they did send us a, a very belated briefing note this afternoon to tell us uh, that they have still struggling uh, in terms of recruitment and retention of suitably qualified doctors. Uh, and will continue to exhaust every recruitment option in relation to that, but they have now implemented a management plan uh, to allow the emergency department to remain over, open overnight. Uh, but they go on to say, uh, worryingly, that it still is extremely vulnerable to further loss uh, of any medical staff and, and, and in terms of sustaining the service to a medium to long term. That remains a significant challenge for them. Ironically, they then go on further in their, their briefing document to, to, to encourage us to avoid media speculation over the future of the emergency department could hinder their ability to attract medical staff to help the situation. I have to say that the approach of the trust, and not, I, I, I don't uh, apply this to the current leadership of the trust at all, but the approach of the trust over a long number of years has been, whether intentional or not, has been to reduce confidence in the longevity of the services uh, at Daisy Hill Hospital. And I think that in, in some way contributes to their ability to attract uh, and retain staff. There are significant senior staff there. They're, they have said that they, they have struggled, and others have alluded to the fact that they have struggled to attract uh, suitably qualified staff to cover the nighttime service at Daisy Hill Hospital. Yet I have been told that uh, four staff posts uh, uh, have been advertised and although doctors have, who are suitably qualified have applied for those posts, there have not been any interviews as yet. And I think that is something that the Trust needs to apply itself to very quickly. Another suggestion that was put to me was the fact that in other uh, medical staff in the Trust, uh, in the employment of the Trust, are employed on a Trust basis, not on a hospital site specific basis, and thereby able to rotate their services between both hospitals and provide cover uh, in both hospitals. And yet it seems in terms of the cover of the, for the emergency department, uh, those trusts are being sought on the basis of the specific hospital site. And I think that the, the trust themselves should look at the idea of having uh, consultants that can rotate between both hospital sites to ensure an appropriate level of cover. The, the case for that level of cover to serve as our community has been very well made by previous speakers. I endorse what they have said. Uh, I would encourage the trust to continue uh, to do its utmost to do that, to, to, to provide that service and to create some level of certainty in relation to the services there and, and, in, in, and in doing so provide a level of certainty for Daisy Hill Hospital as a whole uh, going forward. And I call Mr Sean Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and at the outset I would like to um, thank all members and staff who supported the Macmillan Coffee morning in honour of our good friend Stephen McKernan this morning. I welcome this opportunity to speak on this motion. Um, at the outset, I want to um, pay tribute to the frontline healthcare professionals who, professionals who do a fantastic job working on extreme pressure. It is a common occurrence for a nurse who finishes his or her shift at 8pm to be still caring for their patients an hour later. 
I too, like the previous speaker, acknowledge the efforts of the Trust to keep a and &E at Daisy Hill a 24-hour service. But the most worrying aspect today is that we do not have a health minister in charge. Who is running the health service? We hear grand references to the equality and access to service in rural areas, areas but all we see is centralisation. And I certainly maybe talk more from a South Down perspective. Morn has lost its hospital, its minor uni injuries unit. The out of hours service operates occasionally, and attempts are now being made to close Sleeve Row residential home. We in Morn depend more than ever on Daisy Hill. Reduction of many critical services such as A&E at the Down and the planned removal of stroke service from Daisy Hill serve as an indicator of the direction of travel that the health service is taking. Patients who are unable to secure appointments via GP surgeries are presenting at already outstretched accident emergency departments. Cost savings in one department are leading to chaos in another. Patients who rely on services at Daisy Hill and Down are being denied access to vital care. South Down constituents are now possibly the most disadvantaged citizens in the North. What is the clinical basis for the removal of the, unit, the stroke unit from Daisy Hill? We all know the reason why it needs to be retained, to provide quicker access for people living, living in the hospital catchment area to life-saving treatment. Yes, life-saving. If you have stroke and live in Mourne, in places like Addy Call or Bally Bay, you will do very well to get an ambulance and get to Daisy Hill in 90 minutes, never mind the golden hour. I do not in any way want to detract from the level of service at Craig Avon, but, with, but without an air ambulance, it is too long a journey from the Mourns. Frequently in the wintertime, we have only a coastal road to, to, to get to the hospital. The towns and rural communities of South Down are being marginalised and let down by the gradual erosion of services, firstly at the Down and now at Daisy Hill. I have yet to hear a valid reason why stroke services in the form of a specialised stroke unit in Daisy Hill cannot be maintained there. I understand there is ongoing consultation with the Dublin government, which could result in patients from Louth and Monaghan accessing services at Daisy Hill. Daisy Hill has a fine reputation as a stroke centre. Let us build on it to serve all the people. During the summer, speculation was rife that accident emergency provision at Daisy Hill was facing reduction in services due to staff shortages. At a recent meeting, the Acting Chief Executive of the Trust outlined their difficulties at attracting middle grade doctors and consultants for accident emergency. As the Trusts have reduced services to the Down and RMA minor injuries, this has put even more pressure on Daisy Hill. And, and they in turn putting more pressure on Craig Avon and in turn the Belfast Hospital. Mr Speaker, in a recent consultation improving through care, the SDLP voiced its concern and recognises that it is critical for local people to have confidence in the health service and that health care is best delivered at a local level where the facilities exist. Just to give one example of a constituent, an elderly lady who is in a nursing home in Newcastle if she takes ill during the night, she has moved to Daisy Hill and, as has happened on a number of occasions, has got first class care. But if she takes ill during the day, she has taken to Down Padrick. Recently, her family were contacted that she had gone to Down Padrick, only to discover she was lying on a trolley there for three or four hours, waiting on a bed to be made available in the Down. This woman is coming 84 in a few months' time. How would you like your mother or your grandmother to be treated like that? I ask, where's the patient care? Where is transforming your care? Such inhuman treatment. That's what's happening in our health service, and it's disgraceful. The SDLP recognises that while financial responsibility is a major constraint in determining future strategy, it can't be the sole focus. If services Daisy Hill were made more readily available, both north and south, it would contribute to making the hospital even more sustainable in the long term. The Trust must realise that a health service must operate on the basis of a, of a community's best interests, not strictly on a financial bottom line. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I call Mr. Chris Hazard. Can I thank the member for, for bringing this very important uh, German debate to the, to the floor today? Um, I, I do want to go on record, I suppose, li like everybody else who's spoken here today and say it is quite regrettable that the health minister, and indeed I would also say the former health minister, uh, the member for South Down, um, Jim Wells, isn't here as well. This is a very important issue um, for our constituents, and I think it is regrettable they're not here. I also want to put on record right from the start, um, I, you know, thanks and, and pay tribute, I suppose, to the staff 
uh, at Daisy Hill and indeed the Down, uh, who do a great service to our community and have done for a long time. Very often, when public reps become frustrated uh, at the situation, um, you know, it is often portrayed that you know, we're attacking the, you know, the entire institution of a hospital, including the staff and frontline staff. This, of course, is a long way from the truth. Um, you know, we would be lost uh, without them. I think is what's been touched upon by um, Mr. Rogers is I don't think we can separate the, the futures of both the Down and the Daisy Hill hospitals. Uh, you know, two very proud hospitals who serve the people of South Down well for so many years. Um, but I think that you know their futures are very much intertwined. Um, if we look and we know how the Ulster Hospital is sucking so much out of the, the down, I think it's probably similar with Craig Avon. Um, if we see the loss of coronary care and, and the emergency department from the down, Reed Strokes uh, unit and emergency and the, the fear of the emergency department from Daisy Hill to Craig Avon. So we see the, this big brother effect uh, and it's sucking the life and I think sucking the hope out of so many people who rely upon these services. Uh, in what is, and this has been also been alluded to by many, the very rural aspect of a constituency such as South Down. You know, we've touched upon, and Ms. Farron touched upon, the, the feelings of ambulance cover in what is a very rural area. Um, Mr. Rogers talked again uh, about the, the, the elderly person, and, and we see this time and time again. Um, in recent months, we've seen tens of thousands of people on the streets of both Downpatrick and Newry. Um, I, think, I, I don't think any of these people uh, are immune to change. We know our health system is changing. We know there's a need for change. How we deliver uh, services in a first-class way, of course, needs to change. But what we're seeing is a complete lack of engagement, all too often from the higher echelons of the Department of Health. Uh, we need to see a minister take control of the situation. We need to see a Department of Health carefully lay out a plan uh, engage with people. You know, we had the situation totally regrettable with the Down that the night before Christmas Eve it was leaked uh, that the Down was going to close. Uh, and panic set in, understandably, and this shouldn't be the way that it's done. You know, so where do we go forward fr from here? Well, having spoken to re recruitment agencies who deal with medical practitioners, they're saying it's very, very possible to follow like, what they've done in the South and bring in medical doctors from Eastern Europe who are more than capable. They've come into the Midlands Hospital in, uh, in Roscommon in the South, and they're doing a great job. However, and this is perhaps where it would have been good to have Jim Wells in the chamber, who showed some reluctance the last time to look at this. I think this is an avenue that we need to look at. If there are people out there within the EU or further afield that can come and do a good job for people, I think we need to search them out. I think this is a big, big test for the Minister and, and how we approach this, and so far they're failing. Uh, I can't help but say if we had to close schools because there was no teachers to teach our kids, there would be you know, it would be pandemonium. We would not tolerate it, and we shouldn't tolerate the instance that we have to close medical departments because we can't get the doctors. This is a big test for the minister, and, and so far we're not seeing enough. And just finally, we see the success that Alton Galvin has been in the, in the cross-border solution when it, when it comes to cancer care. There are no good reasons why the likes of Daisy Hill cannot become a champion hospital uh, for th those in the border areas. Uh, we look at working alongside with Trahara and the Down, uh, but it's clear the people of South Down, indeed, Nuri and Armagh will not be best served by concentrating all of our services in Craigavon or the Ulster Hospital in Belfast. It does not serve our people well, uh, and we need to see a focus now from the Minister and the Department um, to reinstate a bit of confidence in these services. Gorm Elgut. Thank you. <clears throat> and the question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned. Thank you very much, members. And that was an important topic.